President Bola Tinubu has allocated portfolios to his ministerial nominees at last, and they'll be sworn in on Monday. We'll discuss this our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. ECOWAS defense chiefs in a meeting held in Accra, Ghana, have revealed that the bloc has begun the activation of its standby force in Niger Republic to restore constitutional order. This is our second hot topic on The Breakfast. And we'll be taking a look at the stories that made it to the headlines this morning on some major national dailies on Off the Press. We'll have our analysts joining us at that time to discuss them and uh, have better understanding of what the issues are. Good morning, I am Maureen Menongwezigwe and it's so good to know that you're there. Welcome to Friday's edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's go straight to our top trending stories. The first, doctors threaten strike in Benue over abducted colleague. The Nigerian Medical Association, Benue State Branch, has threatened to declare an indefinite strike in the state over the kidnap of a medical doctor, Asema Muswega, by gunmen in Ukum local government area of the state. Muswega, who works at the General Hospital Sankera Zakibiam, was abducted alongside another health worker on July 23, 2023. The pair were on their way to supervise a malaria control program at a primary health center, PHC, in Ukum LGA. The NMA on Wednesday in Makurdi in a statement lamented that the kidnap of Muswega was the second of such abductions in the state in the last three months. The enemy stated that the pattern cannot be ignored as it seems doctors are now the target of kidnappers in that state. The enemy called upon the Benue State Governor, Reverend Father Hyacinth Alia, and top politicians, especially those who hail from Okum LGA, including Senator Emmanuel Udende, representing Benue Northeast, senatorial zone and the chief of staff to the governor Paul Biam to swiftly intervene and ensure the immediate release of Dr. Muswega from the hands of his abductors. They are also seeking the intervention of the revered paramount ruler of the Tib nation, Archivali, His Royal Majesty Professor James Ayatse, to take decisive and immediate action that will lead to the release of their colleague and his subordinate. They urged the governor to reinforce security measures around the health facilities across the state, especially in areas that have become breeding grounds for heinous crimes. That's our first stop trending. The second is Lagos State. We'll move from Benue State to Lagos State, which uh, has okayed the withdrawal of firearm charge against Emirfele. The federal high court sitting in Lagos has struck out the legal possession of firearm charge against the suspended Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emirfele, following an application by the Minister of Justice to withdraw it. Justice Nicholas Owebo struck out the charge on Thursday after holding that the prosecution had the statutory powers to withdraw a charge against the defendant at any stage of the trial. The judge in his ruling held that the application filed by the Director of Public Prosecution, Mohammed Abubakar, seeking the withdrawal of the case is found in Section 108 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which empowers him to withdraw the charge, and there is no requirement for the application to be in writing. The defense, through its lead counsel, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Joseph Audu, had argued that the prosecution could not withdraw the charge unless the government purges itself of its disobedience to the court's order of July 25th, granting a Mirfale bail. Justice Owebo, in a short ruling, condemned the conduct of the prosecution. In allowing the withdrawal of the charge, the judge wondered what good it would do to the defense if the court did not allow the leave. Well, there you have it. Some drama playing out there over Amir Feli. 
uh, aka Mephi, that's his nickname now. Nigerians have given him a nickname that's Mephi. Um, so many things going on around the suspended former governor of uh, the central bank. Um, many things, many things are still yet to unfold. So we just keep our fingers crossed and see how all that plays out. Some say that the government bungled the opportunity to bring him to justice over some of the monetary policies that he uh, brought to fore during his time, well, when, before his suspension, that was during the former administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, but it's still unfolding, so let's see how all of that uh, pans out. Some have accused this present administration of winch hunting him. But then, the case is in court, so let's see how it ends at the end of the day. We'll take a break and come back and let you know those headlines that made it to the front pages of some national dailies. Stay with us.